key takeaway from both Governor Jack Markell's State of the State address and his budget. The best we know how to do that on first is with State of Play. And here to help, Stephanie Hansen, former Newcastle County President and attorney with the law firm Young, Conaway, Stargett and Taylor, and Michael Stafford, who is also a lawyer and columnist. His work is featured on MSNBC. Thanks guys so much for being here again. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Governor Markell was in our studios last week and he cited some more robust DFAC numbers and he's saying that those numbers justify his 5% increase in his budget. Is this a sign that Delaware's economy is doing better? Michael, why don't we start with you? Well, I mean, to me, is it doing better for who? Doing better for the average Delawarean? I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. I think there are pockets of increasing prosperity and success in this economy, but I think we still have challenges. And those challenges, I mean, we see it with DuPont. Mm -hmm. um, we see it with the, 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 the closure of various businesses. Um, a lot of the jobs that really sustained the uh, sort of the blue collar and the, 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 the lower middle class uh, families in, in Delaware have gone away and they've been replaced with what? The Amazon warehouse? I mean, mm -hmm. we all can't stock shelves at Amazon. They're, they're going to replace us with drones anyway one day. So I, it, it, <laughs> prosperity for who? Better for who? I agree. It's, it's looking up for some people. Mm -hmm. But is that broadly shared? I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. Well, we also, though, if you take a look at Delaware's economy versus the economy of our surrounding states, and not just uh, Maryland, and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, but also those that are a little further out, you'll see that Delaware is kind of an island that's actually expanding. Our economy is, is now expanding as opposed to those around us who are still recovering from the, from the recession. Mm -hmm. So we are doing better, um, not by leaps and bounds, but we are doing better than our neighbors are. Mm -hmm. Better for, and as Michael was saying, touching on his point, for whom, you know, are, are the really wealthy just doing better? And then the people who are working kind of on that lower tier of, of employment, are they doing better? And just sort of everyone in the middles kind of, get, you know, treading water, are we there? Well, that's the question, an economy that works for who? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, you know, just nationally, I mean, granted, Governor Markell has limited ability as the governor of a small state to kind of swim against the current on some of these national trends, but we have seen an economy in this country move from a model of more broadly shared prosperity and access mm -hmm. to one that is more exclusivist and that is more sharply divided between the haves and the have-nots. I don't see that trend being reversed here in Delaware. I don't see an explosion of jobs that would sustain working families, whether that's in manufacturing or in the re retail or um, even the service sector. I, I, I don't see that. So yes, there's more prosperity, we're adding jobs, um, but are they the kind of jobs that can sustain a family, you know, living a middle class lifestyle? I'm not so sure. The big spending item in Markell's fiscal year 2017 budget, health care. The costs just keep going in that upward direction. What do you guys think about him calling on state employees and new state employees to sort of have to dig into their pockets and pay more for their health care? I think everyone's having to do that. I mean, this is something that if you've been in private industry for a while, you've had to come face to face with that um, a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. So the increase that that I understand the state employees are being asked to assume is going from a dollar and ninety eight cents a month to nineteen dollars and forty eight cents a month as an increase in yeah. how much they're going to pay for health care. Um, that's still not a bad deal. Yeah. It, it, it again, it gets back to an economy that works for whom in the private sector. I mean, we have seen, not everyone, but many of us, have seen wage increases over the past several years be completely consumed, basically nullified, zeroed out, by health care costs increasing. And, and that reality doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. When you're in the private sector and you're looking at folks working in the public sector, I think one of the dangerous dynamics is that the public sector workforce still has a lot of the benefits, the accoutrements mm -hmm. that used to be common even in the private sector. You know, if you worked at GM or Chrysler, you got what? Great benefits and a pension when you retired. Well, who the heck has that anymore? Mm -hmm. None of us. Right. In the public sector, they do. And so it does breed a certain resentment between people who are stuck in this revolving door private sector where there is no security, there's, there's increasing precarity. And folks in the public sector where you can work you know, a few years, get vested in a pension, retire, go get a second job, earn that second pension. That, that's, that's hard for people who are stuck in the private sector to take. Markel's, the stomach. Markel's state of the state, he kind of was reminding all of us about how far Delaware has come. Do you think that you, he wants that to be his legacy, to remind people that we started off pretty low and we are far better off? And he Absolutely. was the guy who did it? 
I yes, I think that that's I think that's what his uh, his intention is, and I think that that's a that's actually a pretty good uh, pretty good story. Now he does have the ben I don't want to say the benefit. <laughs> he, he has the he came in at a time when we were pretty far Correct. down in the in the tank, and as nationally we've been kind of everyone's been making their way uh, a little a little further up. But as I'd said earlier, Delaware has done better than its neighbors. So I mean we can't say that this is. You know that that the fact that we're doing better is due to something other than his policies, because clearly things that he has done have been very helpful. So he can take the credit and enjoy it. Well, yeah, things Some could only it. get better yeah. isn't exactly a compelling slogan for one's <laughs> legacy. They're not going to put it on the Jack Markell gubernatorial, you know, memorial library one day. Um, they could have said things would get worse. Things could have been a lot <laughs> worse. <laughs> and, and to his credit, I mean that I think that is true to a point. Um, he certainly was very proactive in trying to address some of the, the issues that we had when he first came into office, the closure of the automotive plants, um, the closure of the refinery in Delaware City, the big job losses that we took. Um, whether he did that you know, in, in, in a way that derived maximum benefit for mm -hmm. the state, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure, but he certainly was proactive in trying to address those things, and he deserves some of the credit for that. Okay, so that's where we're going to leave things. Stephanie Hansen, Michael Stafford, thank you so much for being here for State of Play, and we will see you next month.